I am Richard Gilbert, the attorney on the federal case for the delegates. Mr. Romney, no one, and I mean no one, pushes around a Ron Paul delegate and politically survives. Mr. Romney, how was your trip abroad to raise campaign contributions in Israel and Europe? It must have been a typical Bain-style huge criminal success. Don't you know it is a felony crime to take any campaign contributions from any foreigner? Another day, another Romney felony crime. Of course, this disqualifies you from becoming president. In my second video, I explained what a Romney presidency would be worse. It would be worse than Watergate from day one. So now all delegates have yet another profound reason not to vote for you at the organized crime convention in Tampa. You are a serial criminal. Your latest felony crime of taking foreign campaign contributions makes you un-American, a criminal, a felon. How will you report your foreign contributions to the Federal Election Commission? Will you commit perjury and lie about it like you did when you filed your perjurious SEC filing regarding your status as CEO of Bain from 99 to 2001? A felony crime investigation will start regarding your foreign campaign contributions even in the course of the general election if necessary. You will be convicted of these crimes. Under federal guidelines sentencing, you will be sentenced to years in federal prison. Of course, you will have fled to France by then to avoid extradition and prosecution for your felony crimes. All this in addition to your support to put U.S. citizens in concentration camps on U.S. soil with no court charges and no legal counsel. No delegate with a conscience can vote for you. Your support for concentration, concentration camps to imprison U.S. citizens on U.S. soil with no rights to a court or legal counsel or criminal charges is repugnant. The law you support, Mr. Romney, includes the Patriot Act, which defines a terrorist as a person who commits a criminal act, including a misdemeanor. The Military Commissions Act gives the executive branch the authority to hold U.S. citizens indefinitely without a trial. Bill H.R. 1955 labels anyone that protests or resists any government decree as a terrorist. Anyone that protests or resists any government decree is a terrorist. These are your policies that you endorse. Concentration camp operations calls for a red list. What is a red list, Mr. Romney? The red list are people to be killed in the concentration camp. They include, and U.S. citizens and delegates, listen carefully to this, the red list includes outspoken ministers, leaders of patriot groups, like the Tea Party, outspoken talk show hosts, and community leaders, all to be killed. This is what you support, Mr. Romney. So delegates and all citizens now understand that these internment camps mean their loved ones, their friends, will be killed and or detained without trial indefinitely. When delegates understand this, no delegate with a conscience can vote for you. Here is the internment camp employment application procedure. Go to your military recruiter and ask for Form 31E, Internment Resettlement Specialist, Careers and Jobs. They're hiring now. Why are they hiring now? Because more than 800 internment camps are fully operational throughout the United States. 
you can get a job as a concentration camp guard. They're available now. You just have to be willing to support U.S. citizens. That's what you support, Mr. Romney. Mr. Romney, if you show up in Tampa, we may place you under arrest for a felony. A felony crime of taking foreign money as campaign contributions while you were on foreign soil. Here are your rights, Mr. Romney. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can and will be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Do you understand these constitutional rights I have just read to you, Mr. Romney? These are the constitutional rights that come from the Constitution. These are the rights you want to deny U.S. citizens, some who commit a misdemeanor, that you and your crime family decide to put in internment camps. You have taken the dark road of election fraud crimes in nearly every state. You have rigged voting machines to have votes for other candidates count for you. You have stolen ballot boxes and files. You have not counted votes so you can steal primaries you did not win. You broke people's bones, Mr. Romney, and you threatened people with violence. You scared single mothers with children in the nighttime that your criminals are on their way to their home. When your crimes did not work, you just threw duly elected delegates off their state delegations like a third world dictator. You will never be more than a fraudulent nominee of your organized crime convention if you can steal the nomination. You lay one finger on anyone in Tampa, and you will regret it for the rest of your life. You will be held personally responsible, Mr. Romney, for what your criminal security does, and you will be held personally responsible for whatever any of your crime family does in Tampa, because you are nothing but a criminal. So, there will be no party unity, there will be no unanimous nomination and no presidency. As good and decent Republicans, we have a special duty to make 100% certain that you never get the keys to the Oval Office. We will campaign against you in every battleground state, spreading the word like Paul Revere to the country folk to be up and to arm with the knowledge of your criminal acts. Have you returned your profits to your crime victims in your eight and a half billion dollar Ponzi scheme that you started with your millions of dollars of seed money? No. You have not yet returned any of that money. You still have your offshore bank accounts. You use the Cayman Island accounts to acquire and hide foreign investment. You used your Swiss accounts to hide income. And for the big crimes, you used Panama accounts. You didn't think we knew about the Panama accounts, did you? A Romney presidency would be worse than Watergate from day one. You are nothing but a criminal with a business partner named Alan Stanford, serving a 110-year sentence for your Ponzi scheme. Let's remember what your son said about Alan Stanford and your other eight and a half billion dollar Ponzi scheme partners. Let's quote your son. Quote, they are friends of ours. We own a piece of them. We help them get started. Let's listen to it again. Quote, they are friends of ours. We own a piece of them. We help them get started. Unquote. That's a confession. Have you released your tax returns yet? You can't, because you were a criminal. You escaped your felony crime of election bribery in Wisconsin by telegraphing a message to the prosecutor that he will become a U.S. attorney. And who was with you when you committed your election bribery crime? Paul Ryan. Mr. Ryan gained some influence over you as he witnessed the felony crime. The Wisconsin DA told me personally he could not find any witnesses to the felony crime after a six-week investigation. 
but you committed the crime on television. You did it in front of a couple of hundred witnesses. When I told the DA that the witnesses signed their names next to their addresses in poll books on election day, he changed his story. On a Friday evening, on a three-day holiday weekend, just like a politician, he issued a written statement that your televised bribery was really just a staff meeting. You gave him that advice. The stink of your criminal enterprise is all over it. So, Paul Ryan was the waiter then to your staff meeting. Ryan was present, a witness to your crime, and now you're announced vice presidential candidate. Or, as you more accurately put it, when you introduced him, the next president of the United States, because you will have to run to France to escape criminal prosecution for your crimes. You call your business model creative destruction. You never created jobs. You bought often profitable businesses like KB Toys in malls throughout the country. Then you loaded these businesses, profitable as they were, with impossible debt as part of your creative destruction scheme. You took them into bankruptcy. You fired their employees and destroyed their pensions. You call it creative destruction. Now, good and decent Republicans are going to creatively destroy you. Here's the plan to defeat you at the organized crime convention. First, a federal judge will write a historic decision ordering all delegates to vote their conscience. No person with a conscience can vote for you. New candidates will make it known to the delegates that they are available and interested. These new candidates will strip you of enough of your fraudulent delegates to drive you beneath 1144 votes. Enter Dr. Paul, a good and decent human being who said he would always vote what he had promised and always vote the Constitution. Dr. Paul kept that promise and he will finish close to you on the first ballot. Mr. Romney, when you fail on the first ballot, your campaign will self-destruct. It will implode. And there will be mass exodus from you, notwithstanding your bribery of your fraudulently elected delegates who should not even be there. By the second or third ballot, Dr. Paul will have won the nomination. And if you're not in custody, you can run from Tampa with Priebus and Sununu. History will record that it was Republicans who stood up and saved the Constitution, liberty, and freedom when you wanted to put U.S. citizens in concentration camps on U.S. soil with no rights and hold them indefinitely for as long as you and your crime family wants. Mr. Romney, no one, and I mean no one, pushes around a Ron Paul delegate and politically survives. Thank you. You will be convicted of these crimes. Under federal guideline sentencing, you will be sentenced to years in federal prison. Of course, you will have fled to France by then to avoid extradition and prosecution for your felony crimes. All this in addition to your support to put U.S. citizens in concentration camps on U.S. soil with no court charges and no legal counsel. No delegate with a conscience can vote for you. Your support for concentration, concentration camps to imprison U.S. citizens on U.S. soil with no rights, criminal success. Don't you know it is a felony crime to take any campaign contributions from any foreigner? Another day, another Romney felony crime. Of course, this disqualifies you from becoming president. 
In my second video, I explained what a Romney presidency would be worse. It would be worse than Watergate from day one. So now all delegates have yet another profound reason not to vote for you at the organized crime convention in Tampa. You are a serial criminal. I am Richard Gilbert, the attorney on the federal case for the delegates. Mr. Romney, no one, and I mean no one, pushes around a Ron Paul delegate and politically survives. Mr. Romney, how was your trip abroad to raise campaign contributions in Israel and Europe? It must have been a typical Bain-style huge a court or legal counsel or criminal charges is repugnant. The law you support, Mr. Romney, includes the Patriot Act, which defines a terrorist as a person who commits a criminal act, including a misdemeanor. The Military Commissions Act gives the executive branch the authority to hold U.S. citizens indefinitely without a trial. Bill H.R. 1955 labels anyone that protests or resists any government decree as a terrorist. Your latest felony crime of taking foreign campaign contributions makes you un-American, a criminal, a felon. How will you report your foreign contributions to the Federal Election Commission? Will you commit perjury and lie about it, like you did when you filed your perjurious SEC filing regarding your status as CEO of Bain from 99 to 2001? A felony crime investigation will start regarding your foreign campaign contributions, even in the course of the general election if necessary.